In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to the embedded answer or close question type that Moodle provides. Close can be very, very powerful as it allows you to fully customize the layout and presentation of your question and allow for, in this, as you can see in this example, multiple gaps that the student needs to complete. So close activities can be used for language and literacy exercises, but in this case, the students are actually completing a set of calculations and entering numerical values into a table here. In more complicated examples, the one question type can include both what they refer to as multiple choice, which are these drop down lists, and numerical answers all within the one question. So they can be very, very powerful. But with that comes a little bit of a learning curve to configure them correctly. To help with that, Moodle has a help uh, form which I will send through with this tutorial. But in the tutorial, I'll guide you through the construction of a question and then we'll look at how some of the more sophisticated examples have been built. So let's get started. We're going to create a f our first question. So here I am, I'm just within the question bank area of Moodle and I'm going to create a new question. And the choice that I'm going to use is the embedded answers or close activity. We need to give it a name. And our question text goes into the field available here. I often find it easier to press this, which expands this field to full screen. So in this particular example, I'll ask the students to find the mean, median and mode for a particular data set. Of course, because we're in Moodle's editor, we can start to format this up. I'll just make some of this bold. I'm just selecting words and then hitting Control B. I want to make this a little stand out a little bit, so I'm going to set that to, for instance, heading four. And now I want to create an opportunity for our students to submit our answers. And just to show the, some of the layout features, I'm going to do that into a table. So I'm going to insert a table. It's going to be a two column by three row table. And I'll leave all of the other settings as they are and hit insert. And this is where I'm going to have the students put the answer. So what you see here effectively is the completed table with its relevant answers. But I want to create gaps that the students have to fill these answers into. So first of all, I'm going to position my cursor in front of the first answer. And to create a gap within the sentence, you start with a curly brace, a curly bracket symbol. You then indicate what number this gap is. So we've got three potential answers. There'll be three gaps. So this is the first one. So I'm simply going to type the number one. And then I type colon. And what I want the students to respond to with is a number. So this is a numerical question. And so I indicate that by typing the word numerical. I could also abbreviate that just to NM. I then add another colon. And then the answer that I want the students to give is the 2.2. So I say equals and leave the 2.2 there. Now, if I want to allow for tolerance, that's um, effectively a plus and minus value from the 2.2 that you see there. I can do that by indicating with another colon. And then in this case, I might allow a 0.1 tolerance, 0 0.1. What that means is it will accept any value between 2.1 and 2.3 and then I close the brace. So there's our first gap. I'm going to repeat that now for the second answer. This will be question two. I'll indicate that you can use the abbreviation NM rather than typing the full word numerical. The answer is two, and in this case there are no tolerance. And so we continue. Okay, so I've completed my table and entered the gaps. I'm now going to minimize this window. Scroll further down. What I want now to do is to confirm that this is correct and for Moodle to insert the gaps. So I hit the decode and verify question text button. And what I'm pleased to see is that it's identified now that there are three numerical gaps 
in our uh, question. So let's have a look at these. I'll expand these up. So it's found the first of these gaps, found that the correct answer is 2.2 .2 with an accepted error or our tolerance of 0.1 and the fact that it's going to give that a greater 1 and so it goes. So it's found all of those gaps and it looks good. What I'm going to do is save and continue editing and now I have a preview option so I can confirm that question and that it looks as we expect it to. Let me just test this. So if I for instance put in 2.1 which is within the tolerance value for that, that should mark that correctly and I'll put this in as correct as well and submit and finish and you'll notice that I've got each of those answers correct. So that question is now working. So with that in mind I'll just very quickly demonstrate a slightly more technical example. We saw it earlier on. It's this one here which combines both multiple choice or drop down questions and numerical within the, the one framework. So I'll hit the edit question on this and again I'll expand this to full screen. So the thing that's different now is that the multiple choice or those drop down list questions are built slightly differently. You indicate that it's a multiple choice by now using the MC abbreviation or multiple choice. The correct answer starts with equals and then in this case the correct answer is cash. And then any subsequent incorrect answers which are referred to as distractors have a little tilde symbol followed by the incorrect answer. So you'll notice now that the correct answer is cash and that there's a series of incorrect answers for that. Adjacent to that we have a numerical question built in the same way as I'd shown you previously. So you can see in this quite complicated example that you can combine a series of numerical and multiple choice questions into the one activity type which really expands our possibilities in terms of creating quite sophisticated and I believe contextually relevant question types.